The tavern. Whoever brought me here will have to take me home. On the tavern. In the tavern are many wines, the wine of delight and color, and form and taste, the wine of the intellect's agility, the fine port of stories, and the cabernet of soul singing. Being human means entering this place, where entrancing varieties of desire are served. The grape skin of ego breaks and the pouring begins. Fermentation is one of the oldest symbols for human transformation. When grapes combine their juice and are closed up together for a time in a dark place, the results are spectacular. This is what lets two drunks meet so that they don't know who is who. Pronouns no longer apply in the tavern's mud world of excited confusion and half-articulated wantings. But some, but after some time in the tavern, a point comes, a memory of elsewhere, a longing for the source, and the drunks must set off from the tavern and begin the return. The Koran says, We are all returning. The tavern is a kind of glorious hell that human beings enjoy and suffer, and then push off from in their search for truth. The tavern is a dangerous region where sometimes disguises are necessary. But never hide your heart, Rumi urges. Keep open there, a breaking apart, a crying out into the street begins in the tavern, and the human soul turns to find its way home. It's 4 a.m. Nasruddin leaves the tavern and walks the town aimlessly. The policeman stops him. Why are you out wandering the streets in the middle of the night? Sir, replies Nasruddin, if I knew the answer to that question, I would have been home hours ago. Who says words with my mouth? All day I think about it, then at night I say it. Where did I come from, and what am I supposed to be doing? I have no idea. My soul is from elsewhere, I am sure of that, and I intend to end up there. This drunkenness began in some other tavern. When I get back around to that place, I'll be completely sober. Meanwhile, I'm like a bird from another continent, sitting in this avi aviary. The day is coming when I fly off. But who is it now in my ear who hears my voice? Who says words with my mouth? Who looks out with my eyes? What is the soul? I cannot stop asking. If I could taste one sip of an answer, I could break out of this prison for drunks. I didn't come here of my own accord, and I can't leave that way. Whoever brought me here will have to take me home. This poetry. I never know what I'm going to say. I don't plan it. Plan it. When I'm outside the saying of it, I get very quiet and really speak at all. We have a huge barrel of wine, but no cups. That's fine with us. Every morning we glow, and in the evening we glow again. They say there's no future for us. They're right, which is fine with us. A Community of the Spirit There's a community of the Spirit. Join it, and feel the delight of walking in the noisy street, and being the noise. Drink all your passion, and be a disgrace. Close both eyes to see with the other eye. Open your hands if you want to be held. Sit down in this circle. Quit acting like a wolf. Feel a shepherd's love filling you. That night, your beloved wanders. Don't accept consolations. Close your mouth against food. Taste the lover's mouth in yours. You moan, she left me, he left me. Twenty more will come. Be empty of worrying. Think of who created thought. Why do you stay in prison when the door is so wide open? Move outside the tangle of fear thinking. Live in silence. Flow down and down in always widening rings of being. There's a strange frenzy in my head of birds flying. Each particle circulating on its own. Is the one I love everywhere? Drunks fear the police. But the police are drunk, too. People in this town love them both like different chess pieces. A children's Game Listen to the poet Sinai, who lived secluded. Don't wander out on the road in your ecstasy. Sleep in the tavern. When a drunk strays out to the street, children make fun of him. He falls down in the mud. He takes any and every road. The children follow, not knowing the taste of wine or how his drunkenness feels. 
All people on the planet are children, except for a very few. No one has grown up except those free of desire. God said, The world is a play, children's game, and you are the children. God speaks the truth. If you haven't left the child's play, how can you be an adult? Without purity of spirit, if you're still in the middle of lust and greed and other wantings, you like the ch you're like children playing at sexual intercourse. They wrestle and rub together, but it's not sex. The same with the fightings of mankind. It's a squabble with play swords, no purpose, totally futile. Like kids on hobby horses, soldiers claim to be riding Borach, Hamid's night horse, or Dodo, his mule. Your actions mean nothing, the sex and the war that you do. You're holding part of your pants and prancing around. Dun da da dun, dun da dun. Don't wait till you die to see this. Recognize that your imagination and your thinking and your sense perception are reed canes that children cut and pretend are horses. The knowing of mystic lovers is different. The empirical, sensory sciences are like a donkey loaded with books, or like the makeup women's makeup. It washes off. But if you lift the baggage rightly, it will give joy. Don't carry your knowledge load for some selfish reason. Deny your desires and willfulness, and a real amount may appear under you. Don't be satisfied with the name of who, and with just words about it. Experience that breathing. From books and words come fantasy. Sometimes, from fantasy comes union. Gone, inner and outer, no moon, no ground or sky. Don't hand me another glass of wine. Pour it in my mouth. I've lost the way to my mouth. The wine we really drink is our own blood. Our bodies ferment in these barrels. We give everything for a glass of this. We give our minds for a sip. The many wines. God has given us a dark wine so potent that drinking it we leave the two worlds. God has put into the form of hashish a power to deliver the taster from self-consciousness. God has made sleep so that it erases every thought. God made Majnun love Layla so much that just her dog would cause confusion in him. There are thousands of wines that can take over our minds. Don't think all ecstasies are the same. Jesus was lost in his love for God. His donkey was drunk with barley. Drink from the presence of saints, not from those others' jars. Every object, every being is a jar full of delight. Be a connoisseur taste with caution. Any wine will get you high. Judge like a king and choose the purest, the ones unadulterated with fear or some urgency about what's needed. Drink the wine that moves you as a camel moves when it's been untied and is just ambling about. Special plates. Notice how each particle moves. Notice how everyone has just arrived here from a journey. Notice how each wants a different food. Notice how the stars vanish as the sun comes up, and how all streams stream toward the ocean. Look at the chefs preparing special plates for everyone, according to what they need. Look at this cup that can hold the ocean. Look at those who see the face. Look through Sham's eyes into the water that is entirely jewels. Burnt kebab. Last year I admired wines. This, I am wandering inside the red world. Last year I gazed at the fire. This year I am burnt kebab. Thirst drove me down to the water where I drank the moon's reflection. Now I am a lion staring up totally lost in love with the thing itself. Don't ask questions about longing. Look in my face. Soul drunk. Body ruined. These two sit helpless in a wrecked wagon. Neither knows how to fix it. In my heart, I'd say it was more like a donkey sunk in a mud hole struggling and miring deeper. But listen to me. For one moment, quit being sad, your blessings dropping their blossoms around you. God. The new rule. It's the old rule that drunks have to argue and get into fights. The lover is just as bad. He falls into a hole. But down in that hole he finds something shining. 
worth more than any amount of money or power. Last night the moon came dropping its clothes in the street. I took it as a sign to start singing, falling up into the bowl of sky. The bowl breaks. Everywhere is falling everywhere. Nothing else to do. Here's the new rule. Break the wine glass and fall toward the glass blower's breath. This, that, is tormented and very tired, tortured with her strengths like a madman. His heart. Still, you keep breaking the shell to get the taste of its kernel. Bewilderment. I have five things to say. On bewilderment, the verge of full fauna, annihilation, and God, there seems to be a region of sweet confusion, the sense of being in many places at once saying multiple sentences, a hazy melting, fragile and nearly blank, profound ignorance within which conventional calm behavior seems insane. Rumi's poems are not well trimmed, Persian miniature gardens. They are more like a scholar, and a Mari Shimmel says, the paintings in the Turkoman style, full of abrupt movement, odd flowers and bushes, demons and talking animals. I have five things to say. The wakened lover speaks directly to the beloved. You are the sky my spirit circles in, the love inside love, the resurrection place. Let this window be your ear. I have lost consciousness many times, with longing for your listening silence and your life-quickening smile. You give attention to the smallest matters, my suspicious doubts, and to the greatest. You know my coins are counterfeit, but you accept them anyway, my impudence and my pretending. I have five things to say, five fingers to give, into your grace. First, one is apart from you. This world did not exist, nor any other. Second, whatever I was looking for was always you. Third, why did I ever learn to count to three? Fourth, my coin field is burning. Fifth, this finger stands for Rabia, and this is for someone else. Is there a difference? Are these words or tears, this weeping speech? What shall I do, my love? So he speaks, and everyone around begins to cry with him, laughing crazily, moaning in the spreading union of lover and beloved. This is the true religion. All others are thrown away, bandages by his side it. This is the sima of slavery and mastery dancing together. This is not being. Neither words nor any natural fact can express this. I know these dancers. Day and night I sing their songs in this phenomenal cage. My soul, don't try to answer now. Find a friend and hide. But what can stay hidden? Love's secret is always lifting its head out from under the covers. Here I am. Acts of Helplessness Here are the miracle signs you want, that you cry through the night and get up at dawn, asking that in the absence of what you ask for, your day gets dark, your neck thin as a spindle, that what you give away is all you own, that you sacrifice belongings, sleep, health, your head, that you often sit down in a fire like, a lo like aloes would and often go out to meet a blade like a battered helmet. When acts of helplessness become habitual, those are the signs. But you run back and forth listening for unusual events, peering into the face of travelers. Why are you looking at me like a madman? I have lost a friend. Please forgive me. Searching like that does not fail. There will come a rider who holds you close. You faint and gibber. The uninitiated say he's faking. How could they know? Water washes over a beached fish, the water of those signs I just mentioned. Excuse my wandering. How can one be orderly with this? It's like counting leaves in a garden, along with the song notes of partridges and crows. Sometimes organization and computation become absurd. Of these two thousand I and we people, which am I? Don't try to keep me from asking. Listen. When I am this out of control, but don't put anything breakable in my way. There is an original inside me. What's here is a mirror for that for you. If you are joyful, I am. If you grieve, or if you are bitter or graceful, I take on those qualities. Like the shadow of a cypress tree in the meadow, like the shadow of a rose, I live close to the rose. 
If I separated myself from you, I would turn entirely thorn. Every second, I drink another cup of my own blood wine. Every instant, I break an empty cup against your door. I reach out, wanting you to tear me open. Saladin's generosity lights a candle in my chest. Who am I, then? His empty begging bowl. Late by myself, in the boat of myself, no light and no land anywhere. Cloud cover thick. I try to stay just above the surface. Yet I'm already under and living within the ocean. Does sunset sometimes look like the sun's coming up? Do you know what a faithful love is like? You're crying. You say you've burned yourself. But can you think of anyone who's not hazy with smoke? Be melting snow. Totally conscious, and apropos of nothing, you come to see me. Is someone here, I ask? The moon, the full moon, is inside your house. My friends and I go running out into the street. I'm in here, comes a voice from the house, but we aren't listening. We're looking up at the sky. My pet nightingale sobs like a drunk in the garden. Ring doves scatter with small cries. Where? Where? It's midnight. The whole neighborhood is up and out in the street thinking. The cat burglar has come back. The actual thief is there, too, saying out loud, Yes, the cat burglar is somewhere in this crowd. No one pays attention. Lo, I am with you always, means, when you look for God, God is in the look of your eyes, in the thought of looking, nearer to you than yourself, or things that have happened to you. There's no need to go outside. Be melting snow. Wash yourself of yourself. A white flower grows in the quietness. Let your tongue become that flower. I need a mouth as wide as the sky to say the nature of a true person. Language as large as longing. A fragile vial inside of me often breaks. No wonder I go mad and disappear for three days every month with the moon. For anyone in love with you, it's always these invisible days. I've lost the thread of the story I was telling. My elephant roams his dream of Hindustan again. Narrative, poetics, destroyed my body. A dissolving. A return. Friend, I've shrunk to a hair trying to say your story. Would you tell mine? I've made up so many love stories. Now I feel fictional. Tell me. The truth is, you are speaking, not me. I am Sinai, and you are Moses walking there. This poetry is an echo of what you say. A piece of land can't speak or know anything, or if it can, only within limits. The body is a device to calculate the astronomy of the spirit. Look through that astrolabe and become oceanic. Why this distracted talk? It's not my fault, I rave. You did this. Do you approve of my love madness? Say yes. What language will you say it in? Arabic or Persian? Or what? Once again, I must be tied up. Bring the curly ropes of your hair. Now remember the story. A true man stares at his old shoes and sheepskin jacket. Every day he goes up to his attic to look at his work shoes and worn-out coat. This is his wisdom, to remember the original clay and not get drunk with ego and arrogance. To visit those shoes and jacket is praise. The absolute works with nothing. The workshop, the materials... Or what does not exist. Try and be a sheet of paper with nothing on it. Be a spot of ground where nothing is growing, where something might be planted, a seed, possibly, from the absolute. Where are we? An invisible bird flies over, but casts a quick shadow. What is the body? That shadow of a shadow of your love, that somehow contains the entire universe? A man sleeps heavily, though something blazes in him like the sun, like a magnificent fringe sewn up under the hem. He turns under the covers, and the image is a lie. Clear red stone tastes sweet. You kiss a beautiful mouth, and a key turns in the lock of your fear. A spoken sentence sharpens to a fine edge. A mother dove looks for her nest, asking where, coo, where, coo, where the lion dies, da lies down where any man or woman goes to cry, where the sick go when they hope to get well, where a wind lifts that helps with winnowing, and the same moment sends a ship on its way, where anyone says only God is real. 
Yahoo, or beyond where. A bright weaver's shuttle flashes back and forth. East-west, where are we? Maku, Maku. Like the sun saying, where are we? As it weaves with the asking. The friend comes into my body, looking for the center, unable to find it, draws a blade, strikes anywhere. There is a light seed grain inside. You fill it with yourself or it dies. I'm caught in this curling energy, your hair. Whoever's calm and sensible is insane. Do you think I know what I'm doing? That for one breath or half breath I belong to myself? As much as a pen knows what it's writing, or the ball can guess where it's going next. Emptiness and silence, the night air. And silence. In Persian poetry, the poet often refers to himself or herself by name at the end of a poem as a sort of signature. Rumi's variation on this is to refer in study of Shams, over a thousand poems on this way out of silence. He gives the poetry to its true authorship, including the emptiness after, as part of the poem. Five hundred odes conclude with Kamosh, silence. Rumi is less interested in language, more attuned to the sources of it. He keeps asking Hussam, who's making this music? He sometimes gives the wording over to the invisible flute player. Let that musician finish this poem. Words are not important in themselves, but as resonators for his center. Rumi has a whole theory of language based on the reed flute. Beneath everything we say and within each note of the reed flute lies nostalgia for the reed bed. Language and music are possible only because we're empty, hollow, and separated from the source. All language is a longing for home. Why is there not a second tonality? He muses a note in praise of the craftsman's skill, which fashioned the bare cylinder into a neigh, the intricate human form with its nine holes. The reed flute song. Listen to the story told by the reed of being separated. Since I was cut from the reed bed, I have made this crying sound. Anyone apart from someone he loves understands what I say. Anyone pulled from a source longs to go back. At any gathering I am there, mingling in the laughing and grieving. A friend to each, but few will hear the secrets hidden within the notes. No ears for that. Body flowing out of spirit. Spirit up from body. No concealing that mixing. It is not given us to see the soul. The reed flute is fire, not wind. Be that empty. Hear the love fire tangled in the reed notes as bewilderment melts into wine. The reed is a friend to all who want the fabric torn and drawn away. The reed is hurt and solved, combining intimacy and longing for intimacy, one song, a disastrous surrender and a fine love, together. The one who secretly hears this is senseless. The tongue has one customer, the ear. Sugar cane flute has such effect because it was able to make sugar in the reed bed. The sound it makes is for everyone. Days full of wanting. Let them go by without worrying that they do. Stay where you are, inside such a pure hollow note. Every thirst gets satisfied except that of these fish, the mystics, who swim a vast ocean of grace still somehow longing for it. No one lives in that, without being nourished every day. But if someone doesn't want to hear the song of the reed flute, it's best to cut conversation short. Say goodbye and leave. Thirsty fish, I don't get tired of you. Don't grow weary of being compassionate toward me. All this thirst equipment must surely be tired of me. The water jar, the water carrier. I have a thirsty fish in me that can never find enough of what it's thirsty for. Show me the way to the ocean. Break these half measures, these small containers. All this fantasy and grief. Let my house be drowned in the wave that rose last night out of the courtyard, hidden in the center of my chest. Joseph fell like the moon into my well. The harvest I expected was washed away, but no matter. Fire has risen above my tombstone hat. I don't want learning or dignity or respectability. I want this music and this dawn and the warmth of your cheek against mine. The grief armies assembles, but I am not going with them. This is how it always is when I finish a poem. A great silence overcomes me, and I wonder why I ever thought to use language. Enough words. 
How does a part of the world leave the world? How can wetness leave water? Don't try to put out a fire by throwing on more fire. Don't wash a wound with blood. No matter how fast you run, your shadow more than keeps up. Sometimes it's in front. Only full, overhead sun diminishes your shadow. But that shadow has been serving you. What hurts you, blesses you. Darkness is your candle. Your boundaries are your quest. I can explain this, but it would break the glass cover of your heart, and there's no fixing that. You must have shadow and light source, both. Listen, and lay your head under the tree of awe. When from that tree feathers and wings sprout on you, be quieter than a dove. Don't open your mouth for even a coo. When a frog slips into the water, that snake cannot get it. Then the frog climbs back out and croaks, and the snake moves toward him again. Even if the frog learned to hiss, still the snake would hear through the hiss the information he needed, the frog voice underneath. But if the frog could be completely silent, then the snake would go back to sleeping, and the frog could reach the barley. The soul lives there in the silent breath, and that grain of barley is such that when you put it in the ground it grows. Are these enough words, or shall I squeeze more juice from this? Who am I, my friend? In this world which is made of our love for emptiness. Praise to the emptiness that blanks out existence. Existence, this place made from our love for that emptiness. Yet somehow comes emptiness. This existence goes, praise to that happening over and over. For years I pulled my own existence out of emptiness. Then one swoop, one swing of the arm, that work is over. Free of who I was, free of presence, free of dangerous fear and hope, free of mountainous wanting. Then here and now, mountain is a tiny piece of a piece of straw, blown off into emptiness. These words I'm saying so much begin to lose meaning. Existence, emptiness, mountain, straw, words and what they try to say swept out of the window down the slant of the roof. Quietness. Inside this new love, die. Your way begins on the other side. Become the sky. Take an axe to the prison wall. Escape. Walk out like someone suddenly born into color. Do it now. You're covered with thick cloud. Slide out the side. Die and be quiet. Quietness is the sure sign that you've died. Your old life was a frantic running from silence. The speechless full moon comes out now. Sinai. Someone says Sinai is dead. No small thing to say. He was not bits of husk, or a puddle that freezes overnight, or a comb that cracks when you use it, or a pod crushed open on the ground. He was fine powder in a rough clay fit dish. He knew what both worlds were worth. A grain of barley. One he slung down, the other up. The inner soul, that presence of which must know nothing, about which poets are so ambiguous, he married that one to the beloved. His pure gold wine pours on the thick wine dregs. They mix and rise and separate again to meet down the road. Dear friend from Magaz, who lived in Ray and Rum, Kurd from the mountains, each of us returns home. Silk must not be compared with striped canvas. Be quiet and clear now, like the final touch points of calligraphy. Your name has been erased from the roaring volume of speech. A just finishing candle. Candle is made to become entirely flame. In that annihilating moment, it has no shadow. It is nothing but a tongue of light describing a refuge. Look at this just finishing candle stub someone who is finally safe from virtue and vice, the pride and the shame we claim from those. Craftsmanship and Emptiness I've said before that every craftsman searches for what's not there to practice his craft. Builder looks for the rotten hole where the roof caved in. A water carrier picks the empty pot. A carpenter steps at the house with no door. Workers rush toward some hint of emptiness which they then start to fill. Their hope, though, is for emptiness, so don't think you must avoid it. 
It contains what you need. Dear soul, if you were not friends with the vast nothing inside, why would you always be casting your net into it and waiting so patiently? This invisible ocean has given you such abundance, but still you call it death, that which provides you sustenance and work. God has allowed some magical reversal to occur, so that you see the scorpion pit as an object of desire, and all the beautiful expanse around it is dangerous and swarming with snarks, snakes. This is how strange your fear of death and emptiness is, and how pervase, how perverse the attachment to what you want. Now that you've heard me on your misapprehensions, dear friend, listen to Atta's story on the same subject. He strung the pearls of this about King Mahmud, how among the spoils of his Indian campaign there was a Hindu boy, whom he adopted as a son. He educated and provided royally, royally for the boy, and later made him vice-regent, seated on a gold throne beside himself. One day he found the young man weeping. Why are you crying? You are the companion of an emperor. The, nation, the entire nation is rained, rained, rained out before you like stars that you command. The young man replied, I am remembering my mother and my father and how they scared me as a child with threats of you. Uh-oh, he's headed for King Mahmud's court. Nothing could be more hellish. Where are they now, when they should see me sitting here? The incident is about your fear of changing. You are the Hindu boy, Mahmud, which means praise to the end. Is the spirit's poverty or emptiness? The mother and father your, are your attachment to beliefs and blood ties and desires and conforming habits. Don't listen to them. They seem to protect, but they imprison. They are your worst enemies. They make you afraid of living in emptiness. Some day you'll weep tears of delight in that court, remembering your mistaken parents. Know that your body nurtures the spirit, helps it grow, and then gives it wrong advice. The body becomes eventually like a vest of chain mail in peaceful years, too hot in summer and too cold in winter. But the body's desire, desires in another way are like an unpredictable associate whom you must be patient with. And that companion is helpful because patience expands your capacity to love and feel peace. Patience of a rose close to a thorn keeps it fragrant. It's patience that gives milk to the male camel still nursing in its third year. And patience is what the prophets show to us. The beauty of careful sewing on a shirt is the patience it contains. Friendship and loyalty have patience as the strength of their connections. Feeling lonely and ignoble indicates that you haven't been patient. Be with those who mix with God as honey blends with milk, and say, Anything that comes and goes, rises and sets, is not what I love. Live in the one who created the prophets, else you'll be like a caravan fire left to flare itself out, alone, beside the road. Emptiness Consider the difference in our actions and God's actions. We often ask, Why did you do that? Or, Why did I act like that? We do act, and yet everything we do is God's creative action. We look back and analyze the events of our lives, but there is another way of seeing, a backward and forward at once vision that is not rationally, rationally understandable. Only God can understand it. Satan made the excuse, you caused me to fall, whereas Adam said to God, we did this to ourselves. After this repentance, God asked Adam, Since all is within my foreknowledge, why didn't you defend yourself with that reason? Adam answered, I was afraid, and I wanted to be reverent. Whoever acts with respect will get respect. Whoever brings sweetness will be served almond cake. Good women are drawn to be with good men. Honor your friend, or treat him rudely, and see what happens. Love, tell an incident now that will clarify this mystery of how we act freely and are yet compelled. One hand shakes with palsy, another shakes because you slapped it away. Both tremblings come from God, but you feel guilty for the one, and what about the other? 
These are intellectual questions. The spirit approaches the matter differently. Omar once had a friend, a scientist, Bill Hakam, who was flawless at solving empirical problems, but he could not follow Omar into the area of illumination and wonder. Now I return to the text, and he is with you, wherever you are. But when have I ever left it? Ignorance is God's prison. Knowing is God's palace. We sleep in God's unconsciousness. We wake in God's open hand. We weep God's rain. We laugh God's lighting, lightning. Fighting and peacefulness both take place within God. Who are we then in this complicated world tangle that is really just the single straight line down at the beginning of Allah? Nothing. We are emptiness. When you are with everyone but me, you are with no one. When you are with no one but me, you are with everyone. Instead of being so bound up with everyone, be everyone. When you become that many, you are nothing. Empty. No flag. I used to want buyers for my words. Now I wish someone would buy me away from words. I've made a lot of charmingly profound images, scenes with Abraham and Abraham's father Adzar, who was also famous for icons. I'm so tired of what I've been doing. Then one image without form came and I quit. Look for someone else to tend the shop. I'm out of the image-making business. Finally, I know the freedom of madness. A random image arrives. I scream, get out. It disintegrates. Only love. Only the holder of the flag fits into, and wind, no flag. The food sack. One day a Sufi sees an empty food sack hanging on a nail. He begins to turn and tear his shirt, saying, Food for what needs no food, a cure for hunger. His burning grows, and others join him, shouting and moaning in the love fire. An idle passerby comments, It's only an empty sack. The Sufi says, Leave. You want what we do not want. You are not a lover. A lover's food is the love of bread, not the bread. No one who really loves, loves existence. Lovers have nothing to do with existence. They collect the interest without, ca without the capital. No wings, yet they fly all over the world. No hands, but they carry the polo ball from the field. That dervish got a sniff of reality. Now he weaves baskets of pure vision. Lovers pitch tents on a field of nowhere. They are all one color like that field. A nursing baby does not know the taste of roasted meat. To a spirit the foodless scent is food. To an Egyptian the Nile looks bloody. To an Israelite clear. What is a highway to one is disaster to the other. The Night Air a man on his deathbed left instructions for dividing up his goods among his three sons. He had devoted his entire spirit to those sons. They stood like cypress trees around him, quiet and strong. He told the town judge, Whichever of my sons is laziest, give him all the inheritance. Then he died, and the judge turned to the three, Each of you must give some account of your laziness, so I can understand just how you are lazy. Mystics are experts in laziness. They rely on it, because they continuously see God working all around them. The harvest keeps coming in, yet they never even did the plowing. Come on, say something about the ways you are lazy. Every spoken word is a covering for the inner self. A little curtain flick, no wider than a slice of roast meat, can reveal hundreds of exploding suns. Even if what is being said is trivial and wrong, the listener hears the source. One breeze comes from across a garden, another from across the ash heap. Think how different the voices of the fox and the lion and what they tell you. Hearing someone is lifting the lid off the cooking pot, you learn what's for supper. Though some people can know just by the smell a sweet stew from a sour coop, soup cooked with vinegar. A man taps a clay pot before he buys it, to know by the sound if it has a crack. The eldest of the three brothers told the judge, I can know a man by his voice, and if he won't speak, I wait three days, 
then I know him intuitively. The second brother, I know him when he speaks, and if he won't talk, I strike up a conversation. But what if he knows that trick? asked the judge. Which reminds me of the mother who tells her child, when you're walking through the graveyard at night and you see a boogeyman, run at it, and it will go away. But what? replies the child. If the boogeyman's mother has told it to do the same thing, boogeymen have mothers too. The second brother had no answer. The judge then asked the youngest brother, What if a man cannot be made to say something, to say anything? How do you learn his hidden nature? I sit in front of him in silence, and set up a ladder made of patience. And if in his presence a language from beyond joy and beyond grief begins to pour from my chest, I know that his soul is as deep and bright as the star canopus rising over Yemen. And so when I start speaking a powerful right arm, of words sweeping down, I know him from what I say, and how I say it, because there's a window open between us, mixing the night air of our beings. The youngest was obviously the laziest. He won. Only breath. Not Christian or Jew or Muslim. Not Hindu, Buddhist, Sufi or Zen. Not any religion or cultural system. I am not from the east or the west. Not out of the ocean or up from the ground, not natural or ethereal, not composed of elements at all. I do not exist. I am not an entity in this world or the next, did not descend from Adam and Eve or any origin st story. My place is placeless, a trace of the traceless, neither body or soul. I belong to the Beloved, have seen the two worlds as one, and that one called to and know first, last, outer, inner, only that breath, breathing, human being. There's a way between voice and presence, where information flows. In disciplined silence it opens, with wandering talk it closes. Spring giddiness, stand in the wake of this chattering and grow airy. On spring giddiness, springtime when ecstasy seems the natural way to be, and any other out of tune with the season of soul growth. Song, airy silence, a lively conversation between plants, no urgency about what gets said or not said. We feel part of some hilarious nub pulling up through the surface into light, or lying back in a wagon, going who knows where. The weather of spring in Persia and Turkey, and in the southeastern United States, is all one long extravagant absorption with ground and sky, the fragrances and what unfolds from within. In lucky places such as these, spring is not so much a metaphor for a state of attunement as it is that attunement. Or say it is this, for a mystic, the inner world is a weather that contains the universe and uses it as symbolic language. Spring. Again, the violent bows to the lily. Again, the rose is tearing off her gown. The green ones have come from the other world, tipsy like the breeze up to some new foolishness. Again, near the top of the mountain, the anemones' sweet features appear. The hyacinth speaks formally to the jasmine. Peace be with you, and peace to you, lad. Come walk with me in this meadow. Again, there are Sufis everywhere. The bud is shy, but the wind removes her veil suddenly. My friend, the friend is here like water in the stream, like a lotus on the water. The narcissist winks at the wisteria whenever you say, and the clove to the willow, you are the one I hope for. The willow replies, consider these chambers of mine yours. Welcome, the apple, orange. Why the frown? So that those who mean harm will not see my beauty. The ring dove comes asking, Where? Where is the friend? With one note the nightingale indicates the rose. Again the season of spring has come, and a spring source rises under everything, a moon sliding from the shadows. Many things must be left unsaid, because it's late. But whatever conversation we haven't had tonight, we'll have tomorrow where everything is music. Don't worry about saving these songs, and if one of our instruments breaks, doesn't matter. 
we have fallen into the place where everything is music. The strumming and the flute notes rise into the atmosphere, and even if the whole world's harp should burn up, there will still be hidden instruments playing. So the candle flickers and goes out. We have a piece of flint and a spark. The singing art is sea, foam. The graceful movements come from pearl, somewhere on the ocean floor. Poems reach up like spindrift and the edge, or driftwood along the beach wanting. They derive from a slow and powerful root that we can't see. Stop the words now. Open the window in the center of your chest, and let the spirits fly in and out. Great Wagon When I see your face, the stone starts spinning. You appear, all studying wanders. I lose my place. Water turns pearly, fire dies down and doesn't destroy. In your presence, I don't want what I thought I wanted, those three little hanging lamps. Inside your face, the ancient manuscripts seem like rusty mirrors. You breathe, new shapes appear and the music of a desire as widespread as spring begins to move like a great wagon, drives slowly, some of us walking alongside our lame. Tonight, like every other day, we wake up empty and frightened. Don't open the door to the study and begin reading. Take down a musical instrument. Let the beauty we love be what we do. There are hundreds of ways to kneel and kiss the ground. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase, each other, doesn't make any sense. The breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. You must ask for what you really want. Don't go back to sleep. People are going back and forth across the door sill where the two worlds touch. The door is round and open. Don't go back to sleep. I would love to kiss you. The price of kissing is your life. Now my loving is running toward my life, shouting, What a bargain, let's buy it. Daylight, full of small dancing particles, and the one great turning, our souls are dancing with you. Without feet they dance. Can you see them when I whisper in your ear? They try to say what you are, spiritual or sexual. They wonder about Solomon and all his wives. In the body of the world, they say there is a soul and you are that. But we have ways within each other that will never be said by anyone. Come to the orchard in spring. There is light and wine and sweethearts and the pomegranate flowers. If you do not come, these do not matter. If you do come, these do not matter. Spring is Christ. Everyone has eaten and fallen asleep. The house is empty. We walk out to the garden to let the apple meet the peach, to carry messages between rose and jasmine. Spring is Christ, raising martyred plants from their shrouds, their mouths open in gratitude, wanting to be kissed. The glow of the rose and the tulip means a lamp is inside. A leaf trembles, I tremble in the wind, beauties like silk from Turkestan. The censer fans into flame. This wind is the Holy Spirit. The trees are merry. Watch how husband and wife play subtle games with their hands. Cloudy pearls from Aiden are thrown across the lovers, as is the marriage custom. The scent of Joseph's shirt comes to Jacob. A red carnelian of Yemeni laughter is heard by Muhammad in Mecca. We talk about this and that. There is no rest except on these branching moments. Shreds of Steam light again, and the one who brings light. Change the way you live. From the ocean vat, wine fires in each cup. Two or three of the long dead wake up. Two or three drunks become lion hunters. Sunlight washes a dark face. The flower of what's true opens in the face. Meadowgrass and garden ground grow damp again. Strong light, like fingers, massages our heads. No dividing these fingers from those. Draw back the lock bolt. One level flows into another. Heat seeps into everything. The passionate pots boil. Clothing tears into the air. Poets fume shreds of steam, never so happy as out in the light. Steam bath. Steam fills the bath. Frozen figures on the wall open their eyes, wet and round. 
narcissist eyes that see enormous distances and new ears that love the details of any story. The figures dance like friends diving and coming up and diving again. Steam spills into the courtyard. It's the noise of resurrection. They move from one corner laughing across to the opposite corner. No one notices how steam opens the rows of each mind, fills every beggar's cup with so solid with coins, hold out a basket, it fills up so well that emptiness becomes what you want. The judge and the accused forget the sentencing. Someone stands up to speak, and the wood of the table becomes holy. The tavern in that second is actually made of wine. The dead drink it in. Then the steam evaporates. Figures sink back into the wall, eyes blank, ears just lines. Now it's happening again, outside. The garden fills with bird and leaf sounds. We stand in the wake of this chattering and grow eerie. How can anyone say what happens even if each of us dips a pen a hundred million times into ink? The ground cries out. I feel like the ground, astonished at what the atmosphere has brought to it. What I know is growing inside me. Rain makes every molecule pregnant with a mystery. We groan with women in labor. The ground cries out, I am truth, and glory is here. Breaks open, and a camel is born out of it. A branch falls from a tree, and there's a snake. Muhammad said, A faithful believer is a good camel, always looking to its master who takes perfect care. He brands the flank. He sets out hay. He binds the knees with reasonable rules, and now he loosens all bindings and lets his camel dance, tearing the br brittle, the bridle, and whipping the blankets. The field itself sprouts new forms. When the camel dances over them, imaginary plants no one has thought of, but all these new seeds, no matter how they try, do not reveal the other sun. They hide it. Still the effort is joy, one by one, to keep uncovering pearls and oyster shells. Unfold your own myth. Who gets up early to discover the moment light begins? Who finds us here circling, bewildered like atoms? Who comes to a spring thirsty and sees the moon reflected in it? Who, like Jacob, blind with grief and age, smells the shirt of his lost son and can see again? Who lets a bucket down and brings up a flowing prophet, or like Moses, goes for fire and finds what burns inside the sunrise. Jesus slips into a house to escape enemies and opens a door to the other world. Solomon cuts open a fish, and there's a gold ring. Omar storms in to kill the prophet and leaves with blessings. Chase a deer and end up everywhere. An oyster opens his mouth to swallow one drop. Now there's a pearl. A vagrant wanders empty ruins. Suddenly he's wealthy. Don't, But don't be satisfied with stories, how things have gone with others. Unfold your own myth without complicated explanation, so everyone will understand the passage. We have opened you. Start walking towards shams. Your legs will get heavy and tired. Then comes a moment of feeling the wings you've grown lifting. Not a day on any calendar. Spring and everything outside is growing, even the tall cypress trees. We must not leave this place. Around the lip of the cup we share these words. My life is not mine. If someone were to play music, it would have to be very sweet. We're drinking wine, but not through lips. We're sleeping it off, but not in bed. Rub the cup across your forehead. This day is outside living and dying. Give up wanting what other people have. That way you're safe. Where? Where can I be safe, you ask? This is not a day for asking questions. Not a day on any calendar. This day is conscious of itself. This day is a lover, bred in gentleness. More manifest than saying can say. Thoughts take form with words, but this daylight is beyond and before thinking and imagining. Those two, they are so thirsty, but this gives smoothness to water. Their mouths are dry and they are tired. The rest of this poem is too blurry for them to read. Flutes for Dancing 
"'Tis lucky to hear the flutes for dancing coming down the road. The ground is glowing, the table set in the yard. We will drink all this wine tonight because it's spring. It is. It's a growing sea where clouds over the sea or flecks of matter in the ocean when the ocean seems lit from within. I know I'm drunk when I start this ocean talk. Would you like to see the moon split in half with one throw? The shape of my tongue. This mirror inside me shows. I can't say what, but I can't know how can't not know. I run from body. I run from spirit. I do not belong anywhere. I'm not alive. You smell the decay. You talk about my craziness. Listen rather to the hone blade sanity, I say. This gourd, head on top of a dervish robe. Do I look like someone you know? This dipper gourd full of liquid, upside down and not spilling a drop. Or if it spills, it spills into God and rounds into pearls. I form a cloud over that ocean and gather spillings. When Shams is here, I, I reign. After a day or two, lilies sprout the shape of my tongue. The grasses. The same wind that uproots trees makes the grasses shine. The lordly wind loves the weakness and the lowness of grasses. Never brag of being strong. The axe doesn't worry how thick the branches are. It cuts them to pieces, but not the leaves. It leaves the leaves alone. The flame doesn't consider the size of the wood pile. A butcher doesn't run from a flock of sheep. What is form in the presence of reality? Very feeble. Reality keeps the sky turned over like a cup above us, revolving. Who turns the sky wheel? The universal intelligence. And the motion of the body comes from the spirit like a water wheel that's held in a stream. The inhaling and exhaling is from spirit, no angry, no peaceful. Wind destroys and wind protects. There is no reality but God, says the completely surrendered Sheikh, who is an ocean for all beings. The levels of creation are straws in that ocean. The movement of the straws come from an agitation in the water. When the ocean wants the straws calm, it sends them close to shore. When it wants them back in the deep surge, it does with them as the wind does with the grasses. This never ends. The sheikh who played with children. A certain young man was asking around, I need to find a wise person, I have a problem. The bystander said, there's no one with intelligence in our town except that man over there playing with the children, the one riding the stick horse. He has keen, fiery insight and vast dignity like the, sky, like the night sky but he conceals it in the madness of child's play. The young seeker approached the children. Dear father, you who have become, a become as a child, tell me a secret. Go away. This is not a day for secrets. But please, ride your horse this way just for a minute. Shake play galloped over. Speak quickly. I can't hold this one still for long. Whoops. Don't let him kick you. This is a wild one. The young man felt he couldn't ask his serious question in the crazy atmosphere, so he joked, I need to get married. Is there someone suitable on the street? There are three kinds of women in the world. Two are griefs, and one is a treasure to the soul. The first, when you marry her, is all yours. The second is half yours, and the third is not yours at all. Now get out of here before this horse kicks you in the head. Easy now. The shake rode off among the children. The, sh the young man shouted, Tell me more about the kinds of women. The sheikh on his cane horsey came closer. The virgin of your first love is all yours. She will make you feel happy and free. A childless widow is the second. She will be half yours. The third, who is nothing to you, is a married woman with a child. By her first husband she had a child, and all her love goes into that child. She will have no connection with you. Now watch out. Back away. I'm going to turn this rascal around. He gave a loud whoop and rode back, calling the children around him. One more question, master, the sheik circled. What is it? Quickly. The ride over there needs me. I think I'm in love. What is this playing that you do? Why do you hide your intelligence so? The people here want to put me in charge. They want me to be judge, magistrate, and interpreter of all the texts. The knowing I have doesn't want that. It wants to enjoy itself. I am a plantation of sugar cane, and at the same time I'm eating the sweetness. Knowledge that is acquired is not like this. Those who have it worry if audiences like it or not. 
It's a bait for popularity. Disputational knowing wants customers, it has no soul. Robust and energetic before a responsive crowd, it slumps when no one is there. The only real customer is God. Chew quietly your sweet sugar cane, God love, and say playfully childish, your face will turn rosy with illumination like the red bud flowers. Let the lover be disgraceful, crazy, absent-minded. Someone sober will worry about things going badly. Let the lover be. All day and night, music, quiet, bright, read song. If it fades, we fade.